Hi, and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. You're joining me now underneath my Scion FRS, my 2013 Scion FRS. It's nice and cozy down here. We're deep underneath the front of the car at this very moment as I speak to you. And it's quite exciting what I'm doing today. And I thought I'd sort of share it with you. That is that I'm going to change the radiator hoses of my Scion FRS and the thermostat. I'm changing the thermostat to a lower rating. So it's going from a 200 degree thermostat to a 180 degree thermostat. Because usually when you can make a motor run a little cooler, it usually makes more power. So I'm changing the thermostat and that happens to be underneath the car. Right there. I don't know, can you see that? Right. Okay, so there's the lower radiator hose going into the engine. This housing underneath here is the thermostat. So I'm changing the thermostat to a lower temperature rating. I've got a Mishimoto thermostat. You know how much I like Mishimoto. So I'm changing the thermostat out to a lower temperature one to increase my performance. But also, I'm going to change the lower and upper radiator hoses and I recommend that you do this too now I'm not just changing them out to rubber stock hoses I'm going to change them to Mishimoto silicone hoses okay this is a relatively straightforward job I shouldn't even bother making a video but you never know uh, I've already got the bands loose see this band you just get a pair of pliers it comes off quite easily these are 10 millimeter bolts. There's one and two of them. So I'm going to take those off and that will allow me to remove this housing and get at the thermostat. And I'm removing the hoses. One clamp. There's the other clamp. It's a little harder to reach. Let's see here. Can you see? Let's see here. Oh yeah. Okay. You see right, right there. That's where the hose goes into the radiator right there. That's where this that's where this clamp was. You can reach it with, uh, sorry, you can, you can reach it with a pair of these uh, pump pliers, these adjustable pliers, and that will reach in there and, uh, and get that sucker out. But it's a little hard to work at it and it takes a bit of doing. So this is the hardest part of the whole job is getting this one clamp loose and down the hose and then you got to loosen the hose off of the radiator uh, housing here now you got to be careful because this whole radiator to me appears to be plastic so I wouldn't really be squishing this or really pushing it too much what I did is that I I just sort of worked it I kept going back and forth a little bit pressure 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 and eventually it started to come off and so I think it's going to come off no problem and oh, sorry this one's gonna come off no problem. It's already leaking a little bit of fluid here. So I'm gonna take that off. And as soon as I take this off, all the fluid in the motor is gonna come on out. Oh, and uh, for this bolt here, because my header is in the way, you gotta use a, uh, a, uh, a wrench for this. But for this one, you can use a socket. So 10 millimeter for both. All right, it's important that you catch the antifreeze as it's drained out of your car. For one thing, if you want, you could actually reuse the antifreeze as long as you keep it clean. The antifreeze that's used in the BRZ FRS is like a 100,000 K or lifetime practically radiator fluid, very high quality. It doesn't have to be changed too often. So you could reuse it. In my case, I'm not going to reuse it. In fact, I'm going to replace it with Subaru Super Control with Subaru Super Coolant Antifreeze. This is the incredible stuff that will last a huge amount of time. Extended long life up to 11 years, like as you can see right there. So I got this for about 25 bucks at my Subaru dealership, and I highly recommend that you use Subaru Antifreeze, not just any old antifreeze. And also make sure you catch it and dispose of it in a environmentally friendly way. Now to help the antifreeze drain a little bit faster, we will open up the system. 
it'll allow more to come out, just like that. Open up the system. As you can see, it's draining right there. It's also a good idea to open up your top bleeder screw here. That's where the, the two uh, hoses go into your heater system inside. Right here is a air release. You can open this up. And that will, again, allow fluid to flow freely into your pan. Let's see here. As you can see, I spilled a little bit, which is bound to happen. Make sure you wash this off because your pets, especially cats, love the taste of antifreeze. It tastes nice and sweet, so that will be poison for them. So you make sure that you clean up any messes that you make so you don't hurt your cats. The top hoses are all easily accessible. There's a clamp there, clamp there, clamp there. The only hard one is there's a clamp inside here. So you got two pieces, one, two, and three. Yeah, so take these off. Now on the top side, it might be easier just to remove these two 10 mil bolts and take off I've already loosened this. Take off this whole assembly and uh, then separate the hoses from the center assembly. Again, this is plastic, so you've got to be careful not to push too hard on it. You don't want any cracks. Okay, now that the uh, antifreeze is all drained out of the motor, I can finish taking off the thermostat housing here. Just take off these two 10 mil bolts and it comes right off. Okay, there's our thermostat housing and this is our thermostat right here. Just gonna notice this orient oh come up. It is uh It is, uh, it's uh, kind of stuck. Okay, I think I got it loose now. Oh, there we go. There is the stock thermostat, and I'll be replacing this with something a little special. Okay, all the parts are off. This is what I have taken off. The thermostat housing, this is the stock thermostat. Can replace that, and all the hoses. One, two, three and also the hose for the uh, coolant overflow tank. And these are what I'm gonna be replacing. And the thermostat. And I'll be replacing it with, here we go, the Mishimoto thermostat. This is a 194 degree thermostat compared to the 200 plus thermostat that's in the car. This should be a direct bolt on. Comes with another gasket, just like the stock one. Now this I'm putting in so that I can reduce my engine temperatures, which are quite high in the FRS. And usually that translates into more performance. So there we go. That should be pretty simple. And like I said before, you should buy some Subaru Blue, the super coolant antifreeze. This is what you should have to maintain your warranty and also for it, it just lasts forever just lasts forever and of course this is it Mishimoto hoses these are all the coolant hoses how much did I pay for this I have no idea but there is the part number right there uh, BRZ 13 BK these are the black ones they come in different colors this is silicone now silicone is more durable than the regular rubber hoses and that's what we have here and I also forgot to mention one other reason why I'm replacing these now of course they're pretty old so they maybe they should be replaced anyway but um, it's quite common oh, maybe I'll just show you okay okay we're underneath the motor here it's quite common for 
the FRS and the BRZ to have oil leaks from the cam cover right here. See, right there is where there's often oil leak and I did have an oil leak until it was recently fixed uh, when I got a recall done on the car. They resealed this and it's not leaking when it's good but from the very beginning from the factory when I first bought the car there was a very small oil leak and it dripped on the radiator hose which was right here and and oil and rubber do not mix well it usually degrades the rubber wherever it's touching and indeed these hoses feel pretty pretty weak at this point so yeah that's another reason why silicone resists any oil drippings any of that uh, deterioration effects will not affect silicone but will affect rubber another good reason to go to silicone race cars high performance vehicles all use silicone hoses for their durability and uh, they can just take the punishment so if you love your brz or your frs you should get them mishimoto hoses okay let's have a look at these hoses let's see how they stack up with the stock ones okay there we go Ooh, look at that eh look at that all right there you go these actually i mean they're black but look at that nice orange on the inside they look really nice that looks really nice no not too in your face but just really high quality all right yeah okay so now i gotta pull all this stuff back on okay i know i mentioned that the uh, original oem stock thermostat for the FRS opening point is over 200 degrees well the exact amount is 203 degrees is when this one opens our new Mishimoto thermostat right here well it's going to open at 194 degrees uh, let's see a little bit quick math and that looks to me like 11 degrees difference now will this make the engine run cooler well I think it will and of course, if the engine run, runs cooler, the oil is going to be cooler because I have, I have the OEM Subaru Forester oil cooler. So if the water temperatures are cooler, the oil temperatures are going to be cooler as well. I've already proven that this works. And of course, the differences will translate to the oil temperature, which is good. And of course, silicone, this is just a great idea to upgrade. So I'm saying that you should do this. You should follow my example. You should get silicone. Mishimoto is a good brand. There are others. Uh, Mishimoto, I think, was one of the, the most uh, economical brands with a, a really good name. So I would suggest you get this for sure. And of course, my final reason is cost. Yeah, I know you're saying that these cost more than regular hoses, but over the lifetime of the car, you're going to get your money back. And you know I'm cheap. So of course I wouldn't buy this unless I was going to save money, right? Right. So I would say that these maintain their flexibility and will not dry rot, not dry out, even over the lifetime of the car. These hoses will last the lifetime of this car. I guarantee it. And that, of course, will ch uh, save you money over the long run. No other hose replacements will ever need to be done. So it's a one and done with the silicone hoses. These hoses are so pretty. Maybe I should just leave them off the car and use them as art. Maybe have them wall art in my bedroom. No, I don't think the wife will approve, so we better put them on the car. All right, the first thing I'm going to install is the thermostat, my new thermostat, into the car. Now, remember that the long end of the body, that goes into the body of the engine. This is what you're going to see facing out, and i got to put this gasket around the whole edges, the supply gasket all around the whole edges to secure this. So let's put this in. Okay, we just stick this right back where it starts from. Okay, let's remember this end goes in inside the engine. There we go. Just like so. Okay, here. Yeah. 
Okay, thermostat housing is installed. That was easy. Remember, you don't put a lot of torque on these. They don't have to be very tight. So it's listed as five foot pounds for torque on these. So basically, uh, snug them up and then a quarter turn and you're there. Okay, time to install the lower rad hose. So I've got the OEM clips already installed before you uh, put in the car. And these OEM clips, let's see if I can show you here. These are actually quite good. And when you close them just the right way, they'll stay open or loose by hooking this part over this little tab right here. If you can do that, then they stay kind of loose, as you can see. Makes it easier to maneuver them back on when you want to uh, finish clamping. So that's a good little tip. The OEM uh, hose clamps are quite nice, so I'm gonna reuse these. Okay, the lower rad hose is, is, on. That was uh, fairly, fairly easy. It slipped on nice and easy. Okay, upper hoses are installed. Took quite a bit of work to get these clamps on, I must say, but it looks just great. You can see the Mishimoto uh, brand name there, and uh, yeah, these are gonna last a long time, and I'm very happy with the way this looks. In putting these clamps on, I broke the top of my oil dipstick. I'm not happy about that. Okay, so my final step is to uh, put in my super blue, Subaru super blue coolant, and uh, through my funnel right here, and then we're going to check for leaks. We're gonna bleed the system. Air will come out this little hole here to bleed the system, and then we'll be finished. All right, everybody, the install is done. The Mishimoto silicone hoses and the Mishimoto thermostat are installed. Uh, so in conclusion, I recommend that everyone do this mod. When it's time to change your rad hoses, upgrade to silicone. You won't regret it, it's the way to go. Anyway, thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.